There are some places nobody should visit. No matter how much they want it, no matter how much joy they could bring to everybody. Those places should always remain silent, forgotten, unrecognizable. Some of them may be real, some of them may not, but none of that matters because there's a reason why people die, why the coffin is closed when everyone cries around it, why the past is the past, and that exact reason is the only thing that people should have in mind before reliving something that already happened. But we're all humans, and emotions, tragedy, mystery, and maybe happiness is what we live for, don't we? I wish we could remember that before diving into those secrets. The ocean is one of those places that contain happiness, laughs, and joyful moments. We all love going there to relax and forget about our jobs and complicated lives. It's so relaxing to go with some friends, crack open some beers, and stay near the shore drinking and watching the waves going up and down. When we think of the beach, that's what comes to our minds. Relaxing moments. No more than that. No more. We don't go deeper. We don't want to get to the middle of the ocean. Some people don't even care about learning how to swim. Because it's too scary to float. Too scary to not touch the ground. It feels like you don't belong to this earth anymore. You could see your friends at the shore waiting for you, and, at the same time, you have an enormous darkness underneath you, waiting for you to sink. At the end of the day, it's not about dying in there, it's about disappearing, because as every tragedy we see on the news, you become famous for a very short period of time, then another tragedy replaces you. Tragedies are replaceable. The beach should always be a happy place and that's it. Just a happy place. A place where people go to relax and I don't know how many tragedies we'll have to go through to understand that whatever dwells inside the ocean, that's something we should never visit. That's something that should remain there, unrecognizable. Like a lonely street or a very angry dog that will kill anyone that dare trespassing in his territory. And, I have to be honest, I wish I had understood that back then. You see, Alex and I had very stressful jobs. We both taught English at the same school. And everybody had this job understands how stressful it could get at some point. He was about as tall as I was. Short hair with really big eyes. I always loved this from him because I could read into them what he was feeling in that exact moment. I was like him. My hair was longer. In any case, whenever we left our jobs during the afternoon, we would always go get something to eat. Talk about our days and then we would leave our houses. We had talked before about going to the beach. We just needed a moment to relax. A moment we thought we hadn't had in years. And so, during one Friday, we went to a small restaurant to get coffee and some cookies and talk about our plans. He was looking at some news on his phone, and suddenly the conversation about the beach showed up again. Hey, what are you going to do this Sunday? He asked. Nothing. Maybe read a little bit. I found some cool books yesterday and... I couldn't continue speaking. He gave me his phone and I started reading. There was some news in there. More bodies were found at... Come to Blue Rocks Beach, a place to have fun and relaxing moments. Have you ever heard about this beach? He asked me. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's really not that far away. Maybe an hour? Yeah, exactly one hour. I've driven by that beach before, but I didn't take a look at it. I just didn't notice it. We should go sometime. Do you really think so? I asked. Yeah, why not? We'll go there Sunday. Hell, we could relax and then go back to our lovely school and children once more on Monday. We both smiled. Awesome, he said. I'll prepare everything for this Sunday. I'll pick you up at 7 in the morning. 
We continued eating. Then he said goodbye and left. Finally, I thought, but after all, I wish I hadn't said that. I woke up very early that Sunday and prepared some food, got some clothes, and before sitting down and waiting for Alex, he already parked in front of my house and yelled, Hey, I'm here. Grab your stuff and let's go. I got my bag and I left the house. We spent the whole trip talking about how much we needed taking our time to relax, because we hadn't done so in a long time. We even decided to leave our phones at home. After one hour, we finally arrived. We found a very small place near the road to park. There was just one car there. We took our stuff, left the car, and crossed the road. In front of us, we saw a banner that said, Blue Rocks. I noticed it was a bit old, but I didn't pay attention to it. Right next to it, there was a small bridge with bushes around, and after passing them, we had a huge brown field, two enormous palm trees, a beautiful ocean. Alex ran really fast towards it, joyful. I smiled and followed him. When we were near the shore, we opened the umbrella, put some chairs under it, and got ready to enjoy our day. He stood in front of the ocean and said, What's that? Pointing at something very far away. What? I said. I stood up. Out of the blue, all we heard was, hey, If I were you, I wouldn't go there, guys. We turned around and we saw an old man on a chair, a blue umbrella covering him, and a green mesmerizing glance. He was very pale and wrinkled, and his voice made me think that his age stole the last amount of energy that he had. Why? Is it... is it cave? Alex asked. Yes, it is. A very old and strange cave. No one's gone in there since a long time ago, and it became a place that a lot of people didn't want to visit, he said. I couldn't say a word, but they continued talking. So it had visitors, Alex replied. Well, yeah, it had visitors, but not anymore. You see, some places should remain like that, with no visitors. Don't you agree? He said and then looked at me. I felt intimidated. Yeah, I mean, of course, Alex said, and we sat again. We opened some beers and started talking about how beautiful the ocean was that day. Then we stood up and decided to go for a swim. We were on the verge of touching the water when Alex suddenly told me, Where the hell did that guy go? I looked around. I looked at the place where that old man was sitting, and no one was there. All I could see was some people crossing the small bridge, a family that wanted a peaceful day at the beach, just like us. Alex and I looked at each other, and when he opened his big eyes, I understood everything in that moment. I just wish we had done something totally different. We got in and started swimming. The waves were very strong and it was difficult for Alex and I to swim, but we were finally there, enjoying it, and nothing else mattered anymore. After a couple of minutes, we were a little bit away from the shore. The family that just arrived was getting smaller from where we were. Alex and I were laughing at the waves trying to push us back to the shore. It was sort of a game we had. We were laughing a lot, just having fun, and we forgot about the rest. At some point, I saw the ocean's color changing a bit, and so I decided to dive deep into it and see the animals and whatever was inside of it. Something that surprised me was that some fish were around me, but they didn't go beyond where I was. It's like sort of a wall stopping them from passing an invisible line. I saw Alex's legs swimming further, but I also saw something else that I'll never forget. Something touched my left shoulder, and when I tried to see what it was, I saw a helpless and pale face right next to me. I choked and went back to the surface. Alex saw my expression and came back to me. Hey, what's wrong? What happened? Did you see that? No, what? That... But whatever was next to me already appeared. He instantly changed the subject. We didn't notice, but that cave was right in front of us. Is that the cave? 
I lifted my face and saw it. Yeah, it is. The people at the shore were almost unrecognizable. We took a look at the cave's entrance again. It was filled with giant and sharp rocks. The entrance was like a small and dark door, and had some sort of power that, at this day, I can't define. It was attracting us, and we couldn't control our steps and words. Alex said, Hey, let's go in. And unfortunately, I couldn't stop us from doing so. When we passed that obscure invisible door, all we saw was a small aisle built by those rocks, with a big candle that was lit up. From there we could see the ocean, but a weird dizziness came over us. Our heads were spinning around. We saw each other and without saying anything, we knew we felt the same. My eyes couldn't distinguish Alex, the cave, and the candle. Gray spots showed up, and it was too late before I could say anything, because we both passed out. When we finally came to, we opened our eyes, and when we looked at the cave's entrance, we knew we were in trouble. It was gone. The candle was still there, the same rocks, but there was no entrance, or anything we could cross to go back to the beach. We could still hear the waves stumbling and beating everything inside of it, but that was all. Alex opened his eyes and I read what they were. I had admired his courage because he stood up, took the candle, and then we started walking. We couldn't stay there. The cave was really dark, the sand felt heavy, and the dizziness didn't disappear. I don't know how much we walked, but the silence combined with the wave's melody in our steps, created an eerie symphony that I'll never forget. Unexpectedly, he touched my arm, because on the wall there was a message written, Help me. Our hearts started a race to see which one could pump more blood. We continued walking, and when I accidentally touched the wall, one drop fell on my arm. That message was written recently. The candle was flickering, some shadows were drawn in front of us, and we stopped. No word was said. The only sound uttered was something Alex stumbled upon, a sound that resonated in the entire cave, a sound that only a rotten skull on the sand can make. More shadows were drawn by the flickering candle, and we walked faster. The cave seemed eternal. It seemed there was no exit. And even though we didn't say anything in that moment, we weren't scared of dying. We were scared of disappearing. And then, something stopped us. A sort of a drum resonated really far away, but it was so loud at the same time that it made us take a step back. We turned around, and a giant darkness followed us and swallowed the message in the skull that we previously saw. Suddenly, he took my arm and we walked faster, because we heard steps near us. They resembled something escaping from a horrendous death. We didn't know where they were going. The darkness in front of us didn't seem to end. There was no escape for us, we thought. Those steps stopped, and we heard a woman screaming so loud that it made Alex drop the candle and we both fell and covered our ears. But suddenly the screams stopped. A sort of gasp followed it, and surrounded by darkness we opened our eyes, trying to look at each other. But something else found us. The candle was lit up once more, but Alex didn't do so. I saw someone else when I was laying on the ground with the candle in his hand. I saw that same green mesmerizing glance. But his skin was not wrinkled anymore. His skin was clean and vivid. Something that only adrenaline can do. In his other hand, there was a knife. He looked at Alex and I with an evil and dangerous eye. All we heard was a whisper coming from his mouth. Run. And the courage we had to stand up and run away surrounded by that obscurity is still a mystery for us. That man's steps were louder than the scream and drum we had heard. I don't know how much we ran, but the screams came back and we saw more rotting skulls and blood on the walls. We saw the cave's entrance, but it was totally different. It was bigger. 
It wasn't the one we saw at the beginning, but when we got there, we stopped, and we knew that was our end. But there we didn't see the shore or the family that arrived after us, just the enormous ocean in front of us. It was dark. It wasn't the ocean we were diving in when we got to Blue Rock's beach, but what actually terrified us was what we saw in the ocean, because I knew I had seen it before. Hundreds and hundreds of bodies with lifeless and helpless expressions. Alex looked at me and opened his eyes, but we couldn't do anything anymore, because that man's breath was right behind us. It was our end, and we both passed out. Hey, are you okay? I heard. I opened my eyes, saw Alex, and rapidly went to him to wake him up. Hey, hey, relax, are you okay? I heard again. I saw a young man with his family around me, the family we saw arriving at the beach. Yeah, I'm, I'm alright. What happened? Well, we saw you floating out there, so I jumped in the water to look for you guys. I found blood on your shoulder and head. I should probably take you to the hospital. Alex woke up when that man was talking. We both knew it was not a nightmare, but explaining to him what Alex and I saw was useless. We stood up, thanked them, and ran to Alex's car. We were so scared that we didn't say a word about the whole day to each other. During the very next day, we saw each other at school and we knew it was about time to talk about what had happened. We went to the bar during that night. But when we sat and looked at each other, we knew there was no logical explanation to what happened, and something else confirmed it. Lots of people were going in and out. The place can get very loud and I was already used to it. At the bar's entrance, I saw someone that I immediately recognized, because I'll never forget that mesmerizing green glance until the day I die. Even though everyone was really loud, I can hear him say, I told you. I stood up and ran towards him, but someone stopped me. Hey, hey, leave him. He's not hurting anyone in here. He just comes every once in a while and has a drink. Relax, buddy, said the guy that held me back. Alex came to where I was. The man stood up and left. The bar recovered its usual loudness and Alex and I saw some news on the TV. More bodies were found at the Blue Rocks Beach.